Hello folks, this is Sheila E. from Tennessee, and I've got a really, really old recipe that my mother-in-law taught me, and I'm, I've not seen anybody, they may have uh, up in the, you know, put this on, but this is something I thought about the other day, and I just wanted to share it with you guys, and I know there's some of the, of my relatives that probably have heard of this and remember this, but my mother-in-law always called it, and I'm going to put you where you can see the bowl and everything. Poor man's do, like poor man do, poor man's do, and what that meant in in the Appalachian language was it, this food will do. You know, if this is all you've got, this will do. So it was called poor man's do, and what you used was whatever you had, and a lot of times they had leftover biscuits because they would make biscuits and gravy, you know, uh, for uh, breakfast. So you start out with. Uh, you want to start out with a good clean bowl and I've got just a small baking dish this looks like maybe a, a four by four and I got a little bit of uh, Baker's Joy spray in there but not a whole lot because I'm going to put some butter and let me go ahead and get my knife for that and a spoon but anyway your ingredients is leftover biscuits and I'm going to start out with, this is just some leftover biscuits, and they're a little brown, but it won't hurt. Won't hurt a thing. Won't hurt a thing, young. It won't hurt a thing. So some leftover biscuits, and you crumble, and let me tell you the ingredients first. Leftover biscuits, you got a can of tomatoes. And most of the time back then, they had canned tomatoes in a glass jar that they had canned. And this is um, the diced green chilies uh, with tomatoes, so I'm going to use that too. And, and, and salt and pepper and biscuits and a little bit of butter. And back in the olden days, that, I don't think they had um, deviled ham. They used potted meat. And I'm not a fan of potted meat. So now I eat it when my mother-in-law would make it with potted meat and it was good. So I'm going to preheat my oven uh, because this goes in the oven for a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and heat it at 325. But you've got, I've got deviled ham, leftover biscuits, tomatoes, salt, pepper, and some leftover cheese. Now back then, I don't think they even had shredded cheese. So the cheese they had, they would just layer it, put a layer on it. And everybody back then either had green onions, and I've got some green onions washed and dried here, fixing to cut them up. And, uh, or they had onions that they had dried in their cellar. So I wanted to show you that if you've got some green onions, whether you buy them or you get them out of your garden, a lot of people may not know this, uh, Don't what, what, just go ahead and clean them. Uh, as far as cleaning them, mean peel them, cut the ends off of them, and just peel them good. Wrap them in a napkin. And then put them in a Ziploc bag. So you wrap those dirty onions that's been peeled and cleaned, not washed, not wet. They're not wet. So when you get them out, you want to wash them real good. And if there's any dead ends on the uh, bottom, trim those off. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push this back. So we've got biscuits. We've got some green onions right here. We've got a can of deviled ham, which they use potted meat. And a couple cans of tomatoes and some cheese and butter and salt and pepper. So I'm going to go ahead and chop these onions up, and I, I chose to use the green onions today just because that was more or less what they used back in the day. So I've got my leftover biscuits, and them biscuits, I went outside and left them in there, so it don't matter. It'll still work. It'll still work. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to push you down here just a little, and I'm just going to chop these, and it's not going to be a little tiny chop. It's just a rough chop because this is going to go in the oven and bake. But I've seen my mother-in-law uh, use green onions, and I've seen her just use store-bought onions out of the out of the store, and I've seen her just where they used to hang them up and dry them. You know, just onions out of the garden and hang them in the farm and dry them. Winter onions. And so this is just a rough chop. It's not anything real fine. Just a rough chop. Of course, my family liked them real fine. If they had their way, they'd put these in them. And one of those little dicer machines and just push it to mush. But I, some of this stuff, it's just old-timey. And 
it ain't good mush, you know. Those onions in those little choppers, you can just chop them up because they ain't nothing but mush. You don't taste, you don't get the onion, you just get the flavor of it because it's all mush. So anyway, the, like I said, these have been washed and dried. And I'm going to put this in. And this is about approximately a medium onion if you want to just use a regular onion. Four biscuits. I'm going to put that in. Uh, the, the bowl that's got the biscuits. I'm going to add just a little bit of butter to this mixture. And then I'm going to put a little bit of butter. I'm going to smear it right around my pan. Just like this right here. And right in the corners. And it just helps to keep it from sticking. And it gives it a really good flavor too. Let me wash this off my hands. But this is something, that, and that's all I've ever heard it called. And the reason I thought about it, I was looking through YouTube last night and different things. And something came up about uh, people in Kentucky. And see, we're just a uh, sister to state to Kentucky. Alright guys, I'm back. I had a phone call and it cut my phone off. So let me go ahead and go back over what we was doing. I've got four... Uh, leftover biscuits and some chopped what the, some of my friends would call that scallions I call it green onions a little bit of butter. I've got some butter in this like a four by four pan So what I'm going to do now this is called poor man's do I'm gonna put the tomatoes in here. that has got the chilies in them It's got the little chili peppers in them to give it some flavor and then I'm just going to put some diced tomatoes and like I was saying, back in the olden days, we didn't have a whole lot of canned stuff. You canned your own stuff. And then, I, then I've got some more biscuits over here just in case I need some. They use potted meat. I'm using deviled ham. And you can get that deviled ham in like a, a big pack. You know, the deviled ham. So anyway, we're going to put this deviled ham in here. And this is called Poor Man's Day. And I know there's a couple of my husband's relatives. If they watch this... They're going to remember this. Because I think, I think my husband's mother got it, must have got it from her mother. So, but there is such a thing because I looked it up on the internet and there is such a thing. So I'm going to try to crush these biscuits up with this. And I'm going to put some salt and pepper in it in just a minute. I'm going to... Uh, just have to use my hands. Let me wash my hands real good. Alright. So, we're going to try to use our hands to crush these biscuits up. Because they did get a little bit over brown. So, I wasn't paying attention. So, just crushing the biscuits up. And this is just basically stuff that you had... You know, you have tomatoes and leftover biscuits and onions and and uh, salt and pepper and a little butter. And, and they had potted meat back then. They just loved potted meat. So I don't love potted meat. I mean, I have eaten it and I've eaten this stuff that my mother-in-law made. So anyway, I'm going to take this. I've got one more biscuit. I'm going to tear it up. And then you just sort of mix it together, just like you would a meatloaf. And that's one can of, uh, I'm probably going to put another can, because that's a lot of tomatoes, of the deviled ham. And I might put one more biscuit. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and put one more biscuit. Let me go ahead and get it. I'm just going to go ahead and crumble it up. Now, this is just with leftover biscuits. I don't know if you could use any other bread or not. I never did. She never did. Uh, she never did show me if you could. So, I don't. I just do it the way she showed me. And then I'm going to get another can of this ham and rinse my hands off. You know, I like a double ham sandwich. But uh, I'm going to have to rinse my hands off again. I don't like handling paper. And then not washing my hands and then putting my hands directly in food. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and have this ready. And then I'm going to wash my hands again. That's another can. That's two cans because I had so much tomatoes. Most of the time it's just one can. 
I've got my oven on preheat 325. I'm going to probably run that up to 350. This should bake in about 30 minutes. So this is the second can of devil ham. And like I said, it resembles the potted meat, but it's a whole different thing. So let's see if I can get this stirred up now without using my hand. Try to move this paper so y'all can see. And basically, tomatoes, leftover biscuit, onions or scallions chopped up, a rough chop, uh, potted meat or uh, deviled ham, canned deviled ham, whatever you prefer. They used potted meat back then. And you have to taste of it. There's nothing in it that's raw. You don't put any eggs or anything. But you do have to taste of it because of the salt. You need a little bit of salt. So I'm going to have to get way down in here once I get it mixed up. And you'd be surprised how good this is. My son loves it. I mean, a couple years ago, he even said, Mommy, you remember that stuff Memo made? Said, uh, and we finally figured out what he was talking about. And I said, yeah, a poor man's do. And he said, yeah, I'd like to have some of that, Mom. I said, oh, really? He said, yeah, I always loved it. So I am going to taste it. So give me just a second and thank the Lord for it. Tastes pretty good. You'd be surprised how good that tastes. I'm telling you, it's got a hint of uh, pepper. I'm gonna put a little bit of oregano. That was something they had back then. They had their spices. And I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper. Now, guys, I want you to try this. It, do, it don't need a whole lot of salt. Evidently, that uh, deviled ham, that canned deviled ham, had a lot of salt in it. So we're not putting a lot. This is delicious. <clears throat> you want to make sure you get your salt and stuff mixed up in it really good. And I'm not going to taste of it again because it had some salt. And I think I put a little, so that's not going to be too much. So now what I'm going to do is scoot this right here. And girls and boys, I want you to try this. You're going to be shocked of how good this tastes. My husband will come in. He's been outside piddling. And he's still got his, trying to get over his knee surgery. And I want y'all to keep him in, his, in your prayers. Uh, he's doing better. He's going to get stiff. And it's only been five months since he had total knee replacement. And it's been uh, almost a year since he had major, major uh, foot surgery. So pray for him. And then we found out that he's got a nodule on his thyroid through the uh, after they done a scan to see, making sure that he didn't have any blood clots. They found a nodule on his thyroid, but God's in control. He's still on the throne. And they, they're going to have to take his, uh, not that it's showing, it's not showing cancer, but there's a 50-50 chance that it's possible uh, cancer cells in the thyroid. Not saying that it is, not saying that it's not, but with a genetic test, it's 50% possible that it is. Now you see that right there? So what I'm going to do is take just a little tiny bit of butter. You know how I am, and this is the bon uh, Blue Bonnet Light. And I'm just going to put this right here. And you're going to see, when you put that in the oven, you'll see a sizzle. My mother-in-law always put a little butter on top. But we're just going to dab it right here and there. Now, I know one of Tippy's cousins named Gary, he, he may remember this because... It was his mama's sister was my mother-in-law's mother. So now when we get that, back then they didn't have shredded cheese. They had sliced cheese or a block of cheese that you would cut off and, and just cut it off yourself. And so I've got some taco sprinkle cheese, sh shredded cheese. I'm not sure. I guess that'll be pretty good. I'm not sure. It's all different kinds of cheeses. And so we're going to put this on top. Let me wash my hands again. I just don't like sticking my hands down in that cheese. So I'm sure you can probably put any kind of cheese because they they use whatever they had. I'm telling you. It, and, and you're going to be shocked 
and how good this is. So we're just going to spread some cheese on this. I remember my mother-in-law just taking pieces of cheese and and uh, just she'd take two or three pieces and she'd fold it and then she'd fold it again and she'd take a knife and she would just uh, chop it up over and put it on top of it. So we're going to put this in the oven and I'm going to cut you off while it's in the oven and I want you to see it now and that's called Poor Man's Do. D-O. Poor Man's Do. And what that means in the Appalachian language is this is this is a meal that will do it will do so you see there see all that in there so i'm gonna put this in the oven i'm gonna hit my uh, oven temperature up to 350 for 30 minutes it's in a preheated oven at 325 so we're going to hit it at 350 for 30 minutes and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to show you what we have okay and then we'll cut it in little squares but people, this is so good. You need to try this. This is so simple, so easy, and delicious, you all. So we'll be back in a few, okay? I'll see you in a few. All right, guys, while that's in the oven, I was looking in my refrigerator, and I've got two of these, and I don't want them to go bad, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how I, I'm sure y'all have done this. Uh, roasted cauliflower. Have you ever done that? So this has already been washed and trimmed. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've got me a little pan out here and I'm going to drizzle some olive oil. I'm not going to drizzle the olive oil in it. I'm going to put some onion powder. Now this is garlic powder. I'm going to sprinkle some garlic powder over this. There's one big piece there that I'm going to have to cut though because it's too big. And while that oven's are going to be a good time to go ahead and get this in there and we won't have to waste it either. I hate seeing food go to waste. I just really, really do. I can't hardly stand it. So, I'm trying to cut some of the big ends off of it. That's, I see one more right here. Let's see. All right. So, I'm going to throw them big ends off that cauliflower away. We've got some garlic powder. I'm going to use a little bit of butter that I had left from that uh, poor man's dew that's in the oven right now and smelling delicious. And I'm going to put just a little bit of thyme, because I put some garlic powder, just a little. I like thyme. I like the flavor of thyme. And a paprika. And we're going to use a lot of paprika. And then I'm going to put some olive oil. I'm going to drizzle it with olive oil. Need a little salt. What do you think? A little salt and a little pepper. I always put pepper. Okay. And now I'm gonna stir this up and put a little bit. I gotta fill my olive oil bottle up, guys. The olive oil. So this is gonna be called roasted uh, cauliflower. So I just need to taste of the salt down here. Make sure it's got enough salt, and it does. And I've got some shredded Parmesan, finely shredded. So I'm gonna put a dab of that in there. And that was two cups. These cups like you buy in your grocery store. Uh, it says it is, um, I don't even say how much it weighs. But it looks like a 16 ounce cup. I believe that's bigger than an 8 ounce. So anyway, I'm going to put a couple handfuls. Or if I can get it open. There we go. I'm going to probably go ahead and measure that one for you. I'll start out with one cup of this. And I'm just going to mix that up in with it too. To rest that olive oil. 
So this is going to be baked. It's going to be roasted Parmesan cauliflower. And so I'm putting this in the 350 oven in the middle rack on my little. And <coughs> we'll just have to watch it. I don't think it'll take long. I can't remember. I remember seeing somebody make it, but I don't remember how, how long they baked it for. <coughs> Excuse me. Got that cauliflower in my throat. So there that is. And I'm going to put this in the oven. And it's going to go in the middle rack. So I'll be back in just a few. All right, guys. It knocked you off again, didn't it? So I'll just put you together on my little uh, clips. This is ready to come out of the oven. This is called Poor Man's Dew. And honey, I tasted of it before it was baked. And it was delicious. Look at there. Look at there. Honey, you have got to try this. If you don't try nothing else I do, try this Poor Man's Dew. You're going to love it, I'm telling you. And I'm going to check these uh, cauliflowers and see if they're tender. Yes, I think they are. I think they're about ready. It's got about five more minutes, and I'm going to leave those in there, but I will go ahead and take them out and show them to you so I can get this video put together. So I'm going to leave them in there another five minutes, and these things are going to be delicious, you all. So that was some things that I thought of. Uh, I knew that you all would enjoy this, and it's so good, honey. And I'll try to put on there uh, in the description what I put in this, and it's called Poor Man's Do. So, this is Sheila E. I ain't got no makeup on, and I'm just me. So, this is Sheila E. from Tennessee. And uh, until we see each other again, may God keep you safe. Always smile, because smiles are contagious. And I always give hugs. You never know what somebody's going through, that they might need a hug or a smile. Always give God glory, praise, and thanks, and share what we have, okay? So, Sheila E., until I see you again, okay? See you soon.